Hello and a warm welcome to my broadcast. Um, my name is Reverend Sylvia Nawa from the Stables of the Virtuous Woman. Today I bring a message of the cross. It's Easter, happy Easter, and he is risen. I'm speaking about the cross. I pray that this message, this word is going to liberate somebody, is going to get somebody to move closer to the cross and to get to understand what the cross symbolizes. Let's get into the word of God. So I'm reading from the first Corinthians chapter one and verse 17. And for, 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 for Christ did not send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with uh, not with wise words, lest the cross be emptied of its power. Paul is speaking to the Corinthians and in chapter 1 verse 17, he is saying that Christ did not send him to come and baptize, but to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ, not with wise words, lest the cross be emptied of its power. I'm talking about the cross. What does this cross symbolize to you today? This cross is a means of atonement, a means of reconciliation where mankind and God, God and mankind, there is a reconciliation, there is an atonement for sins that takes place. So the cross is a means towards that. We have read already from the first Corinthians chapter one and verse 17, where Paul is declaring that Christ Jesus did not send him to go and baptize, but rather to go and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ, lest not with the human words, human wisdom, lest the cross be emptied of its power. So let's look at the power of the cross. What is the power of the cross? The cross is a point where mankind and Jesus come together. The cross is a point where sin, so to speak, from mankind and forgiveness from Jesus Christ our Lord comes together. There is an exchange that happens at the cross. Mankind comes with sin and Jesus Christ comes with forgiveness. By the time the exchange has happened, mankind walks away free, redeemed, atoned for his sins. He walks away as a new creation. The old has passed away and behold, you become a new creature. Jesus picks up our sins and he bears them. And because he is bearing them, we walk away free. Because he is bearing them, he nullifies them. His blood nullifies all the sins that we've had, the pain that we have gone through, the difficulties that we have encountered in life as we bring them to the cross and lay them at his feet. We're talking about the cross. And since Paul is saying, I went to preach, I was sent to preach the gospel, not with human wisdom, lest the cross be emptied of its power. Let's look at the power that lies at the cross. Let's look at the symbols, the symbols at the cross that uh, 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 shows us the power that, uh, that is at the cross. And I call this the powerhouse. I call it that the cross is the powerhouse. So first of all, what do we see at the powerhouse of the cross? We find the blood of Jesus. And when we go to Ephesians chapter 2, verse 13, the Bible reads, But now in Christ Jesus, you who were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. And John 12, 32 says, If I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. You who were far off, Far off from the cross, from the Lord Jesus Christ, you have been brought near by the blood of Jesus Christ. And that when he is lifted up on that cross of Calvary, he draws all men unto himself. I'm talking about the powerhouse, the symbols of the powerhouse, of the power at the cross of Calvary. The blood of Jesus is that one, the one that draws you. So it acts like a magnet. It is drawing all men. And when Jesus is on the cross, he says, when I am lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. So it acts like a magnet. It brings men to come to the cross of Calvary where our sins are atoned for and where reconciliation between God and man takes place. The cross, the power of the cross. 
And in Hebrews 12, 24, the Bible reads, the mediator of the new covenant and the blood of sprinkling that speaks better things than that of Abel. So at the cross, again, the Lord Jesus Christ becomes the mediator of a better covenant. The covenant of the blood of Abel is speaking vengeance. But the covenant of the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ is speaking healing. It speaks restoration. It speaks those that are brokenhearted to be mended. It speaks of energizing us, strengthening us. It speaks of forgiveness of sins. It speaks of redemption, setting us free. That is what the blood of Jesus is speaking. And so he becomes the mediator, the new mediator, bringing us the blood of Jesus that has power to heal and to give life. Redemption. Redemption is where Jesus pays for our sins. And that is what we find now in the new mediation. Redemption is when Jesus now carries our sins, bears our sins so that we can be set free. That is found at the cross. So we continue with the cross, the powerhouse, where the symbols, we look for the symbols. And now we are looking at the garment. So the garment at the cross of Calvary, we find the garment of righteousness, the garment of salvation, and the garment of praise. Isaiah 61 and verse 10, let's read from the word of God. Verse 10, I delight greatly in the Lord. My soul rejoices in my God. For he has clothed me with garments of salvation and arrayed me in a robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom adorns his head like a priest, and a bride adorns herself with jewels. So we find under the garment at the cross, we find it in the garment of righteousness, where we become the righteousness of God by faith. We find salvation, the garment of salvation, where our sins are atoned for and we are forgiven. We find the salvation of the garment of praise, where when we are down, when we are feeling low, we put on the garment of praise and our spirits are uplifted. That is what we find under the garment. Matthew 28 and um, verse 18 is talking about the crown of thorns, another symbol that we find at the cross. Powerhouse. The, 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 the crown of thorns. It is a symbol of kingship. It is a symbol of kingship. So Matthew 28 and verse 18, he says, All power is, has been given unto me in heaven and on earth. And therefore, he releases it to us and says, Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations. And in Acts 10, 36, he says he is Lord of all. So it's a symbol of kingship. And he's Lord of all, and he has the power to release to us to say, go and make disciples of all nations. Another symbol that we find at the cross, the thorns. And now we come to the wounds. At the cross, we find five wounds. There are wounds in the hands. There are wounds on the feet. There are wounds on the side where the spear was thrashed into the Lord Jesus and water and, and blood came out. That is a wound. Then we find the thorn, then the crown of thorns, and then the 39 lashes. And what that, does the Bible tell us about the, about the wounds? We're talking about the cross and the power of the cross, that it is a powerhouse. So under the wounds, in Isaiah 53, chapter 53, verse 5, he say, it says, he was wounded for our transgressions. He was wounded for our sins. He was bruised for our iniquities, all our shortcomings. We have fallen short of the glory of God. He was wounded for all that. That the chastisement of our peace was upon him. Peace was taken. All the things that take away our peace, now it has been, he takes it over. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by his stripes, by those lashes, the 39 lashes, we are healed. Not we were healed, not we shall be, no, we are healed. Every disease, every pain that you, you bring it to the cross of Calvary. You bring it at the feet of the Lord Jesus, at the cross, at the power hill house, and you are healed. And the last one, we're talking about the altar now, the altar that speaks. 
We bring everything to the altar, to the feet of our Lord Jesus. And Exodus chapter 20, verse 14 says, You shall make an altar of earth for me, and you shall sacrifice on it your burnt offerings and your peace offerings, your sheep and your oxen, in every place where I cause my name to be remembered. I will come to you and bless you. In every place where I cause my name to be remembered. I love that. Every place you are going to make an altar for me. It means anywhere where you feel comfortable, where you always pray, the place that you, you feel comfortable to just commune with God, that is your altar. And in that altar, he says, you will sacrifice on it your burnt offerings. You are going to bring your worship on that altar. You are going to bring your reading of the word on that altar. You are going to bring your praise on that altar. You are going to lay prostrate, to prostrate yourself in reverence of God. You are going to bless the Lord. You are going to exalt the name of the Lord on that altar. And what does he say? He says, everywhere. In every place where I cause my name to be remembered, anywhere where you are, where you are able to pray, where you are able to speak to God, that is where he is causing his name to be remembered. And he says, I will come to you and I will bless you. I have been talking about the cross, the cross of Calvary, where atonement and reconciliation for God and man happens. The cross of Calvary, which is a point of an exchange of sin and forgiveness, freedom, redemption. The cross of Calvary, which is a powerhouse where we find garments of salvation, garments of righteousness, garments of praise. The cross of Calvary, the powerhouse where the thorns, where he has been, we go to Isaiah and he says that we are now Isaiah chapter 53, that he was wounded for our transgressions, that he was bruised for our iniquities, that the chastisement of our peace was upon him and that by his stripes we are healed. Where we find that the wounds on the hands, on the feet, in the side, on the crown of his head and the lashes, that we are now healed and we find atonement we, we, and we find freedom. And then lastly, the altar that speaks that by the at the altar where where I cause my name to be remembered, where I cause my name to be remembered, I'll come and bless you. This has been the the, the 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 cross. If you have not received Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, just follow this prayer with me. Father God, I thank you for this day. This is Easter. Thank you for dying for me. Thank you for shedding your blood for me. I.